to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist Anita Rivera. It is April 15th, 2023, and what a broadcast report I get to share with you all tonight. Digital currency, you heard me correctly, digital currency is making headlines, and I'll tell you, it is bringing forth Bible prophecy in a way that just shows without a shadow of a doubt how late the hour is, how soon the return of Jesus Christ is, how soon the day of the Lord is. And I am reminded of the scripture in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, where it says, Jesus himself said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Boy, oh boy, do we really need to remember this. Please hear the word of God. Lay up for, your treasure, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. And this word is needed, it's poignant, it's perfect in light of the report we have to talk about right now. Uh, here it is. The Digital Currency Monetary Authority. Friends, this is not Fed now. This is different. This is from the International Monetary Fund, the Global World Bank. Fed now is a bit different. Uh, it's actually, it's a lot different. This is what we're looking at mostly right now with regards to a global currency. The Digital Currency Monetary Authority, DCMA, apparently has launched an international central bank digital currency known as the CBDC. Now, I have several reports I want to share with you all tonight. Just be with me. Is that okay? Come on. Uh, it, it's Because there's much I want to cover and I don't want to rush if that's okay. So just let's let's get right into it. There's a report coming in from the mostimportantnews.com that really highlights a lot of this and I think we're going to benefit by going over this particular article. There they they say the IMF again, the International Monetary Fund has just unveiled a new global currency known as the Universal Monetary Unit, UMU that is supposed to revolutionize the world economy. Here is that article. A new global currency just launched, but 99% of the global population has absolutely no idea what just happened. The Universal Monetary Unit, also known as Unicoin, sounds a bit like unicorn, but it's Unicoin, is an international central bank digital currency that has been designed to work in conjunction with all existing national currencies. This should set off alarm bells for all of us because the widespread adoption of a new global currency would be a giant step forward for the globalist agenda, among other things. And I'll add in specific Bible prophecy. Now, the International Monetary Fund did not create this new currency, but it was unveiled at a major gathering earlier this week. That report coming in as follows. Today at the International Monetary Fund Spring Meeting 2023, the Digital Currency Monetary Authority, known as DCMA, announced their official launch of an international central bank digital currency uh, that strengthens the monetary sovereignty of participating central banks and complies with the recent crypto assets policy recommendations proposed by the IMF. Universal Monetary Unit, also known as UMU, symbolized as ANSI character U with two dots on top, is legally a money commodity. It can transact in any legal tender settlement currency and functions like a CBDC to enforce banking regulations and to protect the financial integrity of the international banking system. Wow. Okay. As the press release quoted, uh, the one that I just shared with you indicates this new universal monetary unit was created 
by the Digital Currency Monetary Authority. So who in the world is a Digital Currency Monetary Authority? Let's answer. The press release says that the organization consists of sovereign states, central banks, commercial and retail banks, and other financial institutions. The DCMA is a world leader in the advocacy of digital currency, they say, and monetary policy innovations for governments and central banks. Membership within the DCMA consists of sovereign states, central banks, commercial and retail banks, and other financial institutions. Basically, it sounds like a secretive cabal of international banks and national government is conspiring to push this new currency down everyone's throats. Now, we're being told that the Universal Monetary Unit is Crypto 2.0 and that those and, the, and, and those that created it are hoping that it will be widely adopted by all constituencies in a global economy. The DCMA introduces Universal Monetary Unit as Crypto 2.0 because it innovates a new wave of cryptographic technologies for realizing a digital currency public monetary system with a widespread adoption framework encompassing use cases for all constituencies in a global economy, end quote. I don't know about you, but this sounds really prophetic. It sounds really shady and terribly concerning. Now, of course, the Digital Currency Monetary Authority is not the only one that's been working on a new digital currency. All of this coming out in recent weeks. The United Kingdom has also been working on one. The same is true for the European Union. And would it surprise anyone that the Biden administration is now touting the potential benefits of a digital form of the United States dollar? The following comes from the official White House website, and I quote, a United States central bank digital currency, CBDC, would be a digital form of the U.S. dollar. While the United States has not yet decided whether it will pursue a CBDC, the United States has been closely examining the implications of and options for issuing a CBDC. If the U.S. pursued a CBDC, there could be many possible benefits, such as facilitating efficient and low-cost transactions fostering greater access to the financial system, boosting economic growth, and supporting the continued centrality of the United States within the international financial system, which leads us back to that IMF, digital currency, global digital currency. Now, I don't think that it's a coincidence, friends, that governments all over the Western world right now are simultaneously developing CBDCs. And the IMF has actually already put together an extensive handbook to assist, they say, to assist central banks and governments throughout the entire world in their CBDC digital currency rollouts. I'm telling you, this is insane. The IMF came out and said the following, uh, the International Monetary Fund is now putting together a central bank digital currency handbook to assist central banks and governments throughout the world in their CBDC rollouts. Published publicly on April 10th, the IMF approach to central bank digital currency capacity development report outlines the IMF's multi-year strategy for aiding CBDC rollouts, including the development of a living CBDC handbook for monetary authorities to follow, unquote. Yikes, friends. A lot of people out there is going to cheer these things on. They're going to cheer when these digital currencies are introduced and it becomes official. But it's imperative to understand that once everyone is using them, financial privacy will be absolutely and utterly eliminated. Authorities will be able to track virtually everything that you buy and sell. And they sure, please understand that they won't hesitate to use that information against you. In other words, if you happen to have a social media page or following or liking, and if you say something against uh, anything that they don't, uh, adhere to. They can eliminate you overnight. Your livelihood, that is. Now, needless to say, the potential for tyranny in such a system is off the charts. Can you imagine a world in which you are restricted from buying meat for just a while, they'll say, because you've already used your carbon credits for the month? That can become a reality, literally, in an instant, with this digital currency, globally. Your financial privileges could potentially be restricted at any given time at the whim of a government bureaucrat. 
And if you're a big enough troublemaker to them, you could be a deplatformed, if you will, from the entire financial system permanently. Yikes. Listen, when we've been blocked or, or, or you know, uh, you know, what is it, banned on of, of certain social media you know, platforms, many people have gone through this. That was a foreshadow. That was a taste of what was to come. Now, of course, in order for such a system to have real teeth, cash and other forms of payment will need to be phased out. And that is precisely what is happening right now in Europe. The following comes from the official website of the European Parliament, and I quote, To restrict transactions in cash and crypto assets, MEPs want to cap payments that can be accepted by persons providing goods or services. They set limits up to 7,000 euro for cash payments and 1,000 euro for crypto asset transfers where the customer cannot be identified. Ultimately, they will just keep lowering the limits until the use of cash is almost completely eliminated. Now, everyone will be slowly but surely forced on to the new digital system, and it will be a system that they control without, or excuse me, that they will control with an iron fist. And most people will willingly go along with it, but these days, most people are just scraping by from month to month. And one recent survey found that 70% of all Americans at this present time are financially stressed at this very point. In that report, inflation, economic instability, and a lack of savings have an increasing number of Americans feeling financially stressed. Some 70% of Americans admit to being stressed about their personal finances these days, and a majority, 52% of US adults said their financial stress has increased since before the COVID-19 pandemic began back in March 2020. According to a new CNBC Your Money Financial Confidence survey conducted in partnership with Momentif. Now, friends, most Americans simply do not care that these new digital currencies could open a door for great tyranny. They just want to be able to pay the bills and take care of their families. And if our politicians tell them that this new system will be absolutely good for them, for the economy, they will be all for it. But those that are awake know that this globalism, this prophetic globalism that was prophesied in the scriptures does not lead to anything good at all. I want to get into some specific scriptures about this. I, I, I think immediately of a portion of scripture found in the book of Revelation chapter 13. And this is uh, about the beast system. And this is echoing exactly what the scriptures foretold would took place in the last generation. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 says the following. He calls us all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. This is all coming to fruition. And, and in all of this, I have to remind you, as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as an evangelist in the name of Jesus, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you must surrender your life to Jesus that the day of the Lord is at hand and that it is not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. The Bible makes it very clear in Revelation chapter 13, in verse 8, that all who dwell on the earth will worship the Antichrist. They will worship the beast whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear. So your name must be written in the Lamb's Book of Life for you not to bow down. Because this thing is going to get so intense. It's going to get so petrifying that it's going to be reminiscent of what happened during COVID. That if you didn't, you know, if you were not partakers of the inoculation, you were more than likely going to be forced to lose your benefits, be demoted, or lose your job. And here, it was like all setting up. It was, it was, it was in preparation. I mean, this thing is coming full speed ahead. But it's not God's will that you fear. The Bible says that God has not given you a spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If your mind is not sound, if you don't have the mind of Christ, if perfect love has not, have, if God's perfect love has not cast out fear from you yet, then you need to surrender your life to Jesus and cry out to God to save you. Because fear is what's going to lead people to take the mark of the beast. Fear of not being part of a new society. Fear of not um, looking like they're, 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 they're wanting peace and safety. Fear of losing benefits. Fear of losing jobs. Fear of not being able to feed their families. People are going to be taking the mark of the beast out of fear. And they're not going to say it's in fear or out of fear. They're going to say it's in unity. Is for the good of all mankind. And friends, there's nothing good about it. Because we are told in the scriptures that this beast system will cause all, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to pledge their allegiance to this new system, to this new order. And in pledging their allegiance, they will not be able to have freedom anymore. Any little bit of freedom that they thought they even had will be taken away. Freedom of choice, for instance, the ability to choose, the ability to, uh, you know, do what you like to do uh, in, in the name of Jesus, uh, you know, such as going to church, reading your Bible. Maybe, you know, for those who are not religious or who are in the faith of Jesus, simply waking up in the morning and deciding whether or not to go to work, if you're feeling under the weather, all of that's going to be stripped from you in an instant. And not just you, but the entire system. The entire planet will undergo this new order. And it is happening quick. It, 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 it's, it's all over the news. So many people... They're so, they don't want to know about God. They don't want to know about this. Or if they, knew, if they do know about it, they say, well, that's just religious mumbo jumbo. That's your fear tactic. That's your fear porn. Has nothing to do with that, friends. Has everything to do with that, about what the Bible said. It's literally coming to pass. It's coming true. The fact that this is true proves that we are eternal beings, proves that there is a heaven and a hell, proves that God is setting before us this day. He's setting before you this day. Life or death, blessing or cursing. But he helps you in your decision-making process. And he says, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. I want to bring to you some more articles, headlines, recent reports, if you would allow me, please. In the midst of all the global digital currency news that have broken the, 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 the media, major breaking news on that front, you have the BRICS Bank coming out. And this is an opposite of the IMF. This is... Um, a, 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 an entirely new type of system, if you will, that's seeking to challenge uh, the IMF and the world system and the new order that is seeking to be established. Uh, it says, as a matter of fact, it says here, a new world order. BRICS nation, it, it's actually got cut off, my apologies. Uh, BRICS nations offer alternative to West. So it's, Nation rising up against nation, just as Jesus said would take place, kingdom against kingdom, and it's happening. This report came out just a couple of days ago. Predictions about the BRICS countries as the fastest growing econ um, e economies haven't quite panned out. Instead, the alliance is now offering a diplomatic forum and development financing outside of the Western mainstream. Something is happening around the world. So first, let me tell you what the acronym BRICS is means, what it stands for. The acronym began a somewhat optimistic term to describe what were the world's fastest growing economies at the time. But now the BRICS nations, B standing for Brazil, R, Russia, I, India, C, China, and S, South Africa, 
are setting themselves up as an alternative to existing international financial and political forums. Now, according uh, to the director of the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, uh, he said, the founding myth of the emerging economies has faded. This is according to Gunther Meihold. He says the BRICS countries are experiencing their geopolitical moment. And so you have Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, which make up BRICS, trying to position themselves as representatives of the global South, providing an alternative model to the G7. The G7 is an informal forum of heads of state of the world's most advanced economies, founded in 1975, which include the following countries, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Italy, Japan, Canada, and the United States. All these countries are members, as is the European Union. Now, BRICS has been challenging the World Bank model for quite some time. Um, in 2014, for instance, they had with, uh, I should say, with $50 billion, U.S. dollars, in seed money, the BRICS nations launched the new development bank as an alternative to the World Bank and to that IMF, the same IMF I just mentioned to you here with regards to the global digital currency. In addition, they created a liquidity mechanism called the Contingent Reserve Arrangement to support members struggling excuse me, with payments. These offers were not only attractive to the BRICS nations themselves, but also to many other developing and emerging economies that had painful experiences with the IMF's structural adjustment programs and austerity measures. This is why many countries said they might be interested in joining the BRICS group. For instance, Saudi Arabia, came out of nowhere, and now they are considering joining the BRICS bank. The United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Algeria, and Argentina, as well as Mexico and Nigeria. These are interested nations right now that is looking to uh, possibly partake in the BRICS group. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, nation <laughs> rising up against nation. I want to share with you another article, if you would allow me. Another game-changing uh, thing took place. It happened just on March. Uh, it, was, it was in late March, okay, 2023. But first, kind of, you know, to you know, keep you guys up to date here, uh, about a year ago, the United States was the ascendant when it came to Middle East politics, working to isolate the nation of Iran by helping to normalize relationships between the nation of Israel and the Middle East Gulf states. Now, before I go any further, I've been talking a bit funny. I could feel it. I had three teeth removed, and I'm, um, I, I'm, I got, I got, um, I'm, I'm, I'm partaking of implant surgery. So I'm working with those the, the, the area missing right now on this side. So I'm hearing like a lisp on my side. So if you hear it, just forgive. And thank you for loving the Lord in all of this <laughs> and your patience with me. Hopefully I'm speaking as clearly as I could, but I could totally tell. Let me continue though, because this is so crazy. Um, the reality just changed with regards to the, uh, with you know with regards to. Uh, Israel and Mideast Gulf states and how the U.S. again was initially the ascendant when it came to Middle East politics, trying to isolate Iran, trying to normalize relationships between Israel and the Middle East Gulf states. Again, that's all changed literally overnight after China. Did you all hear about this? This happened just a couple of weeks ago, friends. China successfully brokered a reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Two completely opposite nations, nations that were at a proxy war. Now, if it says here, China successfully brokered a reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which, if consummated, will radically transform regional and global geopolitics. This consummation will lead to 
the beast system as well. Let me prove it to you here in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 it says here and after the 62 weeks Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary that's talking about a portion of Jerusalem that will be handed over to the Gentiles according to Revelation chapter 11 Jerusalem being divided which is a major part of biblical prophecy uh, the sanctuary, that means the third temple, that's all already been in talks. Uh, you have the Temple Institute in the Nation of Israel that has received a red heifer from the state of Texas. We're on that, <laughs> uh, that they say is uh, pretty much in line with what is needed for a temple sacrifice for what they are hoping will usher in the Messiah. Now, as Christians, we know that Jesus Christ... Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Messiah. He came over 2,000 years ago as a suffering servant according to the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 52. He came in the fullness of time. And in fulfillment of prophecy, he came as a lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. He came as a very propitiation of the sin of all mankind. So much so that it is recorded for us in the Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Well, we know that as Christians, and this is why we preach, but not many want to know that. They do not love the knowledge of the truth that they shall be saved. And for this reason, for this reason, it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, God will send them a strong delusion. And now we have this portion of scripture, Daniel chapter 9. Uh, it says here, uh, again, the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood. Now the flood represents three things, the days of Noah. Jesus said in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24, as it were in the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, flood represents um, uh, uh, a great tidal wave of deception. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, th th he said, The very first sign, let no man deceive you by any means. The flood is very significant according to end time biblical prophecy. And it says here, the end of it shall be with a flood. And till the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. That is talking about the Antichrist, the beast, the Messiah. Is who they will call him. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. Listen, hear this part. Even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. They are calling this successfully brokered reconciliation that China, the red dragon did for crying out loud, the red dragon. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the devil is known as a, the dragon of old. After the red dragon successfully brokered a reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran, Iran is modern day, uh, Iran is known in the scriptures as Persia, Persia. Uh, the, the story of you know Queen Esther. Uh, this is that's that's the same Iran. Um, and it says here, China successfully brokered a reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which, if consummated, that same word that I just shared with you here in the prophecy of Daniel, will radically transform regional and global geopolitics. Uh, excuse me, global and geopolitics. Yikes! I mean, I'm I'm dumb. I'm be, I'm I'm. Be, I'm I'm beyond, I'm, I'm, I'm just beside myself with all of this prophetic news. That says a successful negotiation of a new detente, detente, my lips, between Saudi Arabia and Iran is a remarkable achievement for China. Although even senior Chinese diplomats with extensive experience in the Middle East note that this needs to be assessed in a realistic manner. This is not going to open the door to an age of Chinese meddling in the complicated affairs of the Middle East, noted Wu Siqi who is a former Chinese special envoy for, for Middle East affairs 
Issues such as an Israeli-Palestinian peace agreement are most likely beyond the remit of current Chinese diplomacy in the region, he says. And China's diplomatic intervention also came on the heels of recent Iraq-mediated Iraq talks between Saudi Arabia and Iran. It still is stunning, and honestly, the fact that Saudi Arabia and Iran is now in a type of peace agreement, the fact that that was even possible shows that a so-called peace uh, a deal could happen in the nation of Israel between her and her enemies. Now, I want to share with you another report, if you would allow me. This one coming in from usgoldbureau.com. And it is, uh, it, it came out again just, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, March 20th, 2023 to be exact. China brokers Iranian-Saudi relations deal. On Friday, March 10th, Iran and Saudi Arabia agreed to reestablish relations and reopen embassies within two months. Iran and Saudi Arabia have had no diplomatic relations since the year 2016, following a raid of the Saudi embassy in Tehran after Saudi Arabia executed a Shiite Muslim cleric. Saudi Arabia and Iran are the Middle East's leading Sunni and Shiite Muslim powers. Both sides have been fighting on opposite sides of proxy wars around the region, particularly in Yemen and Syria. China hosted an undisclosed four-day summit between Iran and Saudi Arabia to broker the deal. The release statement said the agreement includes the affirmation of the respect for the sovereignty of states and the non-interference in internal affairs. An alarming change is Iran's statement about Saudi Arabia's nuclear position. This is major news here. Because Saudi Arabia has always been the power in the Middle East. Oil, right? Before you knew it, a few years ago, Iran came into talks with the P5 plus 1 nations to uh, become a nuclear state. <laughs> Angering Saudi Arabia. S having Saudi Arabia see Iran as a rival more than ever before. Because now, become a, you know, becoming a nuclear nation me meant that Iran would be the new superpower in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia didn't like that. Next thing you know, they were having um, talks with Russia to see if they could establish their own type of nuclear program. That wasn't really publicized, but it, it did make a little tiny bit of headline waves, and I shared it with you at that time a few years ago. So now... Again, an alarming change is Iran's statement about Saudi Arabia's nuclear position. They are currently not a nuclear state, Saudi Arabia. But Saudi Arabia has been a staunch opponent of Iran obtaining nuclear weapons. Why? Not for the well-being of the planet, but so they won't lose their superpower status. However, a senior Iranian official told Reuters that, and I quote, Saudi Arabia will encourage the West to reach a nuclear agreement with Iran. What? So you have Iran and Saudi Arabia becoming one nation in a way. Saudi, somebody got smart in, in the Saudi Arabian government and said, you know what, instead of us trying to start from the very beginning something that's already pretty much completed, let's become one with Iran. Let them be, be ours and we'll become theirs. And that is a consummation. That is major breaking news. I'm beside myself with all of this. This is... Several things happening at once, some of which I've already mentioned. Another thing that this means is that Saudi Arabia will probably, and I already knew this, friends. I already knew this. I've talked about this before. But Saudi Arabia, in consummating themselves with Iran, now becomes direct enemies with the nation of Israel. And this now is bringing forth another prophecy that is spoken by the prophet Ezekiel in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. And that is a war against the nation of Israel. This is all lining up. Another prophecy that comes forth in this uh, is the prophecy of um, uh, the Sixth Trumpet War. It's the war also of Armageddon that will be done in Megiddo. I got to share with you at least a couple of what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here. I'm astounded by all of this. I really am. Um... Revelation chapter 16, for instance, says about the sixth bowl. 
Verse 12, then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For there are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gather them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. So that is a portion of scripture of prophecy that this encompasses, the, the report I'm sharing with you. Another prophecy that comes forth in this is found in Revelation chapter 19. Wait, isn't is it chapter 19? I gotta make sure I'm looking at the right one here. Give me a second. Revelation chapter 19, verse 17. Ah, uh, not verse 17. Verse 19, and I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse, <clears throat> excuse me, and against his army. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. This is a Kings of the East prophecy, and it's happening. I mentioned Ezekiel chapter 38. Will you give me a couple more minutes to at least share with you a couple of portions of Scripture there? Listen, I'm giving you Old Testament prophecies. I'm giving you New Testament prophecies. We're rightly dividing the word of truth. This is undeniable that all of this is happening in real time. It's all, it's all gathering. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 38. Now the word of the Lord, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, pull hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia and Ethiopia and Libya are with them all, are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his troops, the house of Togomar from the far north and all his troops, many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. So this is the Lord speaking through the prophet Ezekiel to his people on what will happen when these nations come together to go up against his land. The word of God continues in verse 9, you will ascend God is describing how the war, how, how these nations are going to come up on his land, upon his people. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud. You and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages, I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited, and against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land. It, co it continues. <laughs> I don't know what to say, except the fact that this was... It's what's being prepared. I, I'm just... 
And, and please understand, again, this is all in light, also Saudi Arabia, pretty much siding now with the BRICS bank. Nation rising up against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. And all while these nations rivaling against the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar, uh, the U.S. government in a, in a panic. Having to quickly make decisions and now become one even more in their decision making to strengthen whatever hope they have left in still remaining a superpower economically in this world by now engaging in digital currency. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen? Even so. I, we should have a, a, a meeting, you know, friends? A face-to-face -face meeting to where we could just sit and talk about all this openly. Maybe we could all have lunch one day. Come on. Before we enter into the gates of heaven, maybe we can do something like that. May the Lord lead us. Because I think this was, it is very exciting times that we're living in. And yet very troubling. It's like uh, where, where it says in the book of Revelation where um, the Apostle John was instructed to eat the scroll. And it tasted very sweet in his mouth. Very good. But as, as, as soon as it was digested, it became as bitter as wormwood, it's, he said, in, in, his, in, in, it said in, the, in his tummy. It made him sick. And then he was instructed to go and speak. And prophesy to the nations as to what would take place. So we're here. And I pray that God. I pray that you surrender your life to Jesus. I pray that you allow God to take over your entire life. Over every part of your being. Past, present and future. Your hopes, your dreams and your fears. I pray that the Holy Spirit lead you in all things. And that you would... Invite the work and the power and the person of God's Holy Spirit to lead you in all things, to renew your mind, to baptize you, and to love you. Invite God to take over your life. Because in the midst of the hour that we're living in, in the lateness of it, now is a time that you can get saved. I don't want to say it's not too late because it really is late. <laughs> it's awfully late. You could have done this if you could have done this sooner, right? But heck, do it now. <laughs> you know, I, I guess the term would be fitting. It's better late than never. And you really don't want it to be in a never situation in this case. Amen. So cry out to God. I pray that God do what only He can do to lead you to repentance and to be saved and born again in the name in the name of Jesus. Thunder. <laughs> I don't know if you all heard that. Thank you, Lord. So, friends, I want to say thank you for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God. World reports, amazingly, and perfectly matching Bible prophecy. I want to invite you to learn more about me and my church ministry at www.emoaf.org. E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Um, also... If you or someone you know are in need of a letter of religious exemption, you can email me directly at anita at emof.org, A-N-I-T-A at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. And if, I, if, if you would allow me to just uh, do one more thing, I'd like to invite you to take a moment to donate towards the work of this online church ministry. Uh, your donations truly help make the, make the work of this end time ministry possible. And I'll put a further invite that, you know, in the midst of you donating, if you choose to do that tonight, um, that, uh, you know, you, you are privileged is to your, to your discretion, of course, uh, to make it a monthly donation and become a monthly, you know, uh, you know, monthly donor towards the work of this church ministry. So thank you in advance. If you'd like to mail us uh, and even mail in your donation, you could do that as well. We have our mailing address right there on the front homepage of my church website, again, at www emoaf.org emoaf.org all right friends until the next broadcast report may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you may he be gracious unto you lift up his countenance unto you and give you his peace his perfect peace in jesus name god bless you bye, -bye.